So Apple just unveiled iOS 26 and all the different operating systems during WWDC 25. Also some improvements to Apple intelligence and some other things that they had up their sleeve, which we didn't see coming. So without further ado, let's recap everything for you so you're up to date on everything and what to expect come September and the public release. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's get into iOS 26 first, because that was going to be the main operating system that most people will update because most people have iPhones. Now, I would recommend holding off on a first beta just because the first beta of a major update is going to have the least amount of stability. And I don't want any, anybody having issues and say that, hey, Fernando said to recommend to jump on the beta. I have a second iPhone that I'm going to be putting it on to start off with so we can make these videos. But I will be putting iPad OS on my main iPad, so we'll see how that goes. But... To start off with some of the changes that you should expect with iOS 26, the first thing is going to be that major redesign, right? When it comes to a visual redesign, Apple's calling it their liquid glass design. And again, this is going to be fully subjective, whether you like it right now, or you're going to like it eventually, whether you like it now compared to the previous one. I think it looks great, and I'm all for a big refresh because no matter what, even if you have an iPhone 11, you put this on your iPhone 11, it's going to feel like you have a brand new device because it's all going to be visually different. But the main idea here is to be a little bit more expressive by giving you a more dynamic UI across the lock screen, the home screen, and all the first party applications. And then I'm sure it'll trickle down to those third party applications as time goes on and we get the full public release come September. But again, everything's just going to be a little bit more customizable. Everything is a little bit more rounded off. You'll be able to see some opaque layers. And from all the visual changes that we've seen, I think it's a welcome addition to this new version of iOS 26. And then in terms of what's new, because it's not going to be all just a visual thing, there is some nice functional quality of life improvements, but again, nothing absolutely game changing, at least to begin with. But some of the things to consider here is going to be, of course, the phone and messages app are getting a big update. The first thing is going to be that there's going to be a unified layout in the phone application, and this is going to be optional because you can stick to the old one. Apparently, they did say that this was going to be an optional situation, but I'm all for something different, something a little bit more easier to comprehend and a little bit more mainstream because if you go into the phone app right now, it's a little bit convoluted, especially if you have a lot of missed calls. We're also finally going to get some call screening where we do have a version of that right now, but this call screening looks a little bit more advanced and you're also going to have a hold assist. So you'll be able to have a virtual assistant that'll tell the person on the other line to hold while you're getting to your phone with options on the call screen as it's coming in, as well as transcriptions of voicemails that can be reiterated and kind of sent out as, as an iMessage as well with that new graphic that you see that Apple is showing off. And then when it comes to iMessage, they're doing what I'm calling the WhatsAppification of iMessage. They were trying to pull as much market share away from WhatsApp by giving us more WhatsApp-like features, like being able to have some text indicators in group chats, which is something that we didn't have before, being able to include polls in there for anything that needs to be pulled in your group chat, as well as have some custom chat backgrounds, whether it is something that you just pull off the internet or a picture you take or something that you create in Image Playground. So again, more customization, more fun, more whimsical overall, and just more quality of life features and improvements in the iMessages app, which is something that I'm all for because again, I'm using iMessage and not WhatsApp, so bringing those features over is a welcome add-on. Then to quickly rattle off some other changes, you do have CarPlay and CarPlay Ultra that got some updates, so you do get some more integrated UI, so you do get that liquid glass design. You also get some widgets in there, which they showed off Flighty as the main widget, as well as live activities in there that do kind of correspond with driving to make it as safe as possible to drive. Those are always welcome additions. Then you also have music, map, and wallet updates, like translated lyrics in the music app, route suggestions, order tracking in the wallet, refresh boarding passes in the wallet application as well. So everything just a more integrated design that again matches that liquid glass design. Then you have that brand new application that we spoke about before, which is Apple's bringing a game application that's going to be all about Apple app games as well as Apple arcade games for leaderboards, for suggestions, for different things that you want to maybe add on, for screenshots, for sharing, for communication across all the different applications and games that you're playing in Apple Arcade, as well as regular non-Apple Arcade games. Everything's going to be done in there through the games application in Game Center. And then I do quickly want to touch on Apple Intelligence because they did bring it up slightly and they said that Craig Federuki kind of mentioned and sort of apologized saying that it might have taken them a little longer or didn't, they didn't realize how long it was going to take for Apple Intelligence to really come to fruition. And they didn't really say that all these game changing features like cross app interactions and doing stuff for you were going to happen. It's just going to be more things that are going to be Siri suggested or Apple Intelligence suggested, similar to that polls use case where it's going to suggest to write a poll if people have a bunch of questions and suggestions in your messages app. So more of that and less of those really intense kind of helpful features that an AI should be doing, which should be coming over the coming year, according to what they said. But we saw what happened last year with that, so I wouldn't hold my breath on that. But all the other updates to iOS were beneficial. So now let's get into iPadOS 26, which is what I'm most excited for as an iPad power user. 
The first one we're going to talk about is going to be the new windowing system that they put together alongside Stage Manager. People did complain with Stage Manager about resizing windows, a lot of friction involved in that. Now we have a brand new way to resize everything, and we have a tile system. Tiling for me is something that I do manually no matter what with Stage Manager, and it is a little bit annoying to begin with. So now that we have a dedicated tile system, is amazing for management of your windows. You'll see the ability to minimize apps, which you couldn't really do before. You kind of could, but not really with iPadOS. It also works with Stage Manager and external displays, so that's going to just be a lot better for a quality of life and just an overall kind of laptop replacement standpoint. And then, of course, all the main iOS features are going to trickle into iPadOS, like the design overhaul of the liquid glass design, all the unified UI, the enhancements to the lock screen, the home screen, the redesign of the app icons. That's all coming to iPadOS, and they're not waiting a year like they have done in the past to bring that over, which I love. And then you have the files and preview application. So of course, now we have a preview app, which we didn't really have before, a dedicated app. Then the file management system has gotten a lot better. I've always said that the file system or the file application needed something, bringing to the standard that the Finder app is at in Mac OS. So they're kind of doing what they can. So we have custom folders, the ability to drag those folders into the dock, a new list view, full PDF editing with the Apple Pencil, all welcome additions to the Files app. And we really are trending in the right direction with iPadOS 26. Another huge one is going to be background task and audio management. Background task, again, is something that would always hinder my productivity on the iPad. For instance, I would export a video in LumaFusion, and if I left that application by accident, it would crash and it would not work and it would stop the export. So now we're going to be able to do that. And secondly, or at least we're going to test that. And then secondly, being able to have multiple audio tracks happening at the same time without it stopping the other one. Because iOS is so ingrained into iPadOS, this would happen by default where you would start a YouTube video, and then if you started something on Apple Music or Spotify, it would pause that YouTube video to then play that audio. Now it looks like we'll be able to play two audio tracks at the same time, no matter what application is open or from where. We also get a dedicated phone app on the iPad. So those crazy videos of people replacing their iPhone with an iPad mini can now actually come to fruition. And then we have the journal app and games overlay, which is deep journaling support, as well as new in-game dashboard for multitasking. So that's all coming to iPadOS. Definitely stay tuned because we have a whole video on iPadOS, which I'm working on right now to really show you guys exactly all the different nuanced changes that happen between iOS 18, between iPadOS 18 and the new revamped pro version of, iPad, of iPadOS 26. Those are the two big ones that I did want to highlight. Now let's rattle off the rest of them really quickly just so you guys get a high level understanding of what's happening inside of the rest of them. And again, be sure to subscribe because we will have individual videos for each component of this. So with macOS, of course, liquid glass redesign, all that's coming over to the new version of macOS Tahoe, macOS Tahoe 26. If you guys were thinking that it was going to be macOS Tahoe and you guys guessed that, leave a comment down below because I got that wrong. The first major thing that we're going to get is going to be the continuity update. So you have your full phone app on the Mac with call screening, hold assist, and sync voicemails, which is basically an add-on to what was happening now with all the notifications that you got on your Mac computer with iOS 18 and Mac OS 15.4, I believe it was. You have a spotlight overhaul, you get live activities, gaming on the Mac is getting better, and then also you have a Safari redesign, journal app, revamp photos app, better FaceTime, Braille, and accessibility tools, which we did cover in the past. So all that's coming to Mac OS Tahoe 26. Next, we got to talk about watch OS 26, because again, my watch is something that I use every single day, whether it is for working out or day to day things. And of course, we're going to get that liquid glass control center, the smart stack in the photos with the face and better app UI overall. So it's bringing some of those elements over to watch OS 26. We are getting a new workout buddy, which if you guys have followed me on Twitter, you guys know that I use ChatGPT as my kind of workout coach where I upload all of my workouts into GPT, just have a running list and also get suggestions. We are now getting a form of that directly built into your Apple Watch, which is going to be the Workout Buddy. You also have a workout app update with four corner layout, music and podcast suggestion, playlist matching. Hopefully that means that uh, Spotify gets a little bit better on the Apple Watch. You also have messages and smart stacks for live translations, those polls as well, smart replies, new actions. You have a wrist flick gesture, which dismisses notifications and calls with one handed movement. Always a welcome addition to see how that works. And then also you get a brand new notes app, live listening controls, hold assist, customizable watch faces, and a lot more. So watchOS is going to get its own video as well. But those are some of the high level things that I wanted to shout out. The workout buddy is something that was a long time coming because again, this is a fitness and wellness device first, in my opinion. So bringing that over is going to be a welcome addition overall. And then last but not least, for all you Vision Pro users that are still out there, Vision OS 26 is getting a nice little update. First and foremost, we're going to get spatial widgets. So you're going to be able to anchor in 3D space a customizable size, color and depth of any widget that you want. So it's going to be, always be there whenever you slap on that Vision Pro, and it'll always be there for you to be able to look at and see for glanceable information. We're also going to get enhanced persona, so more realistic appearance and full profile views. 
which again teach their own on what you think those look like and how good they look or bad they look but let's see again i might have to give myself another vision pro to see what this is all about and then a lot of the vision pro stuff is going to be tailored towards enterprise clients and enterprise use cases which is totally fine but we also get some better spatial scenes which is going to be using apple intelligence to bring photo depth to life with lean around views which is good so you'll be able to like kind of lean and see around which we did already kind of have that but this is just a more enhanced version of that we also have shared spatial experiences, so watch movies, play games, or co-work in the same environments, which is something that, again, Apple should have brought in the very beginning. Instead of making this a solo device, make this a collaboration device, kind of like the Meta Glasses or the Meta Quest. And then, of course, you have new input and immersion, so you can play with PlayStation VR 2 controller support, 180 and 360 degree video playback from GoPro, Canon, Insta360, just to name a few things in terms of compatibility with the Vision Pro and how you're gonna be able to use it with other accessories. So Apple is definitely opening it up a little bit more because they know that they're gonna need help from the outside ecosystem to really make the Vision Pro a competitor, not just in the productivity solo workspace, but just as a VR, AR, and kind of mixed reality headset glasses all the way around. So let me know in the comment down below what you think. So that was just about do for this video, everybody. This was just a quick recap of all the major things that happened. There was some other stuff that we're gonna to touch on in a future video, like the tvOS stuff that happened, some accessibility stuff that happened, but I wanted to keep it just the high level for the major stuff, just to show off exactly what to expect and see what you guys are excited for. I'm excited for all the major things that are happening to iOS. I'm already installing all these betas on my iPad as well as my iPhone. We'll see if I put it on any other devices and that remains yet to be seen if I put it on Mac OS too but we'll see exactly how that goes overall. And we'll also have the compatibility list on our website if you guys wanna check that out down below. But that'll do it. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin. Subscribe to the channel for more top features. Become a channel member if you wanna get some awesome wallpapers. And until next time, if you guys wanna watch more videos like this and see if we were right about some of our guesses, click on one of these right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.